Welcome everyone to part one of whatever week this is for Destiny Horizon. I think it's week 14. I think so it's week 14. Sure. If it's not, I'll just edit 13 over what I said so that I'm smart. Uh -huh. uh, it's been a while, so we're going to skip introductions, okay? We want to get right to gaming. This is a pretty pivotal role. So I'm just going to assume that my players... Azel, Ethan, Jonathan, and Brian are all having a fantastic time and are excited to play as we bring the Destiny Horizon closer to its climax. So, the scene opens with Valerie and Toon Po staring out the windows of the bridge of the Destiny Horizon. And out before the ship, they don't see Eidos' sister anymore. Her craft went down to help with evacuations and proceedings. What they do see instead is several indicators of uh, anti-air platforms being destroyed, airships being destroyed. Every time a blimp goes up from space, you guys can actually see um, a big fire on the planet. Um, you guys, I think it's then that you realize that this planet's probably the size of the moon. It's not very big. Um, and that probably ties into why it's so overcrowded. So we're going to start there. You guys are alone in space. And you have a skeleton crew, remember. There is a crew with you, but it's only like 15 or 20 people. So Valerie's just looking and watching this and and kind of a you know, she's in that in that place where we often, you know, you're looking at something and then you kind of say something and it's like time. Um is is the stars in on board? Is it in the docking bay? I think so. Okay. I don't think any of took it. Okay. Why? I don't know. I just wondered. It seems to come and go. Now, usually we're we, on board. I'm going to have somebody come on the bridge. But before we do, I want to uh, move over to Ethan real quick. And remember how your woman wouldn't shut the door and kind of prolong her game? Sweetie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, you, could you bring me a cup? Thank you. See how that works? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> the the doors to the bridge open and one of the interns steps out. You guys can continue conversation because this intern won't interrupt. But if you look over at her, she's pushing her glasses up and she looks really excited. Hello. <laughs> so Toon Poe was talking, okay? and then <laughs> Valerie just turns and addresses the person. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. She looks at Toon Poe. Sorry. Um, I, I think you should take a look at this. The research that you had me start on. I think oh. you discovered something. Okay, so I take a look at it. Yeah, you see a bunch of mathematical equations, but you, you realize that with... They tried to unlock the gate with every single person on in the crew roster, and it seems like there's something in Grikaza's DNA that can activate the gate. And your theories oh. were right. You guys can go home at any time. Click our heels together three times. Okay. Oh, interesting. We'll have to let Krakaza know this. Ton. Yeah. Um, we can go home anytime we need to or want to, as long as we have Krakaza with us. Uh, what do you mean? Something in his DNA. The DNA causes causes, it, causes the gate to activate. According to all of this, and she holds up the pad. See, with this and this, and that's where it causes DNA. And 
which no. he doesn't really look well, at. I wonder cause... what that is. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> oh, well, he's just looking at it going, well, okay. I mean, he's, but he's anyway, we can go home. Man. Yeah. What? Good. There, if Valerie would like to roll a medicine check, she could analyze what the particulates are in his DNA that causes the issue. I shall. But before we do that, I oh. need everybody to roll me a destiny. Oh. Shit. This is not going well. You know, this is the first time I asked, I did not have to say, no, what do I have to roll? <laughs> yeah. Asked, Yay! Well done. Well done. I'm He's learning. Not as old as I feel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, His DM's gonna side. roll one real quick. Although I rolled a dart, I rolled a shit. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> so, six light side, two dark side. This is gonna be a bad campaign for me. You guys better not be stingy with it. All right. Okay. Um, how many? Roll uh, me a medicine check I... against three purple, but I'm going to give you okay. a blue because you've already analyzed this injury. Okay. Ooh, an injury. Uh -huh. uh, hint, um, hint. Is... Oh, an injury. You open up Krakaza's file and it folds out like a dot matrix printer and just starts <laughs> stacking on the floor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Injuries. Well, let's see. Section A. You know, I forgot all about dot <laughs> It, mentioning dot matrix printer, I have to say this because it's fresh on my old brain. But I just, I forgot all about those things existing until I was watching last night the China syndrome, and why everything was happening in the nuclear power plant. They had a dot matrix printer explaining what's going on. And I went, you know, oh, in I a lot they of had those in a lot of places like that, though, they still use dot matrix printers because do they the really? Paper, because the paper is so wide, you can get a lot yeah. of information out of it. Oh, that's true. Also, the wow. most basic operating systems use dot matrix. So if you want a system that's really powerful that can maintain, oh, I don't Still. know, a nuclear power plant, using a basic <laughs> DOS-style operating system is actually more efficient and uses less hardware. Anyway, wow. that's the side okay, the point. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Three difficulty, Medicine. you succeeded, and you have advantage. Uh, I would recommend oh. passing the two advantage on to either I shall. someone in particular... Or the next person. Now, we know from the last episode that Eidos might be in trouble. So if you wanted to, you can use those two to give Eidos a boost on his first check. I think that's a good idea. Thank you for mentioning that. Thank you. Yes. You're and Eidos, don't... <laughs> if, you, if you're thinking your actions might take a role, make sure that you choose... Don't be like, I'm going to use a Skullduggery and then have that be the one to your boost. You want to use that boost no, for no, no, no. getting okay, out of that Okay, so what happened, though, that I rolled this? What did I notice? Um, so you actually remember. You remember being in the hangar, um, visiting the Destiny Horizon during your station on the Folly, and they had just, the sarcophagus had just activated, and Grakaza touched it, and it exploded. And shards of the Sith artifact that were interlocking with it went inside Grakaza's skin. Oh! And the doctor theorized, the Mon Calamari doctor, actually theorized that Grakaza oh, oh, was oh. the one who active. Oh, am I roboting? No, 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 no. I was just making oh. the sound of the doctor, but sorry. <laughs> yes! Mm. The Mon Calamari doctor uh, ended up theorizing that Grakaza was actually the one who activated the Sith Gate, not the sarcophagus. Because of the shards of evil mm -hmm. embedded in his. Oh, I, I don't know if they're evil. He's just got the key to a really evil door. <laughs> <laughs> so. Evil shards. <laughs> the shards. Very cool. Oh, all right. Oh. You have to get so him back. This is all like Toon Pose. <laughs> well, I think whole, Toon Pose. I don't know, though, because I think you, you're you not a scientist, right? But you were with a team of scientists that studied the gates. That's true, yeah. So I think you it would make sense to you, but how it meshed with his body, I think, is beyond you. It would be like saying... Right, it would be like saying, oh man, I was around my debit card too much, so now my body absorbed the link to the chip, and every time I walk into a place, <laughs> I wirelessly buy everything. 
that that to you would be like how does that even work i mean i guess it makes sense but that's stupid The mysteries of medicine. Yes. So he's, he's saying he's been holding out on us, doctor. He, I don't think he knows. He's <laughs> probably not quite. He probably doesn't really know. So I must tell him, but probably not at the moment. He's probably very busy. Or should I? Or should I tell him? What do you think? Uh, I. I mean, I wouldn't give him one more thing to worry about right now. Well, that's true. But Although isn't he the one in charge? Thing? The intern interrupts. Who? Krakaza? Krakaza? Yeah, you're right. He's the one in charge now. He's the highest ranking officer, right? I mean, I always that's have to true. tell him what I'm doing when he comes by and goes... <laughs> Ironically, that, that intern does a really good Wookiee impression. Tunpo is impressed. <laughs> No, a little you know, thing pops up in the corner, and it's like Tumpo will remember this. He does need to know, but probably just at the moment, I'm sure he's quite occupied with some other things, mainly getting our people off of the planet. But as meanwhile, soon as he gets back, the screen wipes directly when she says that to Grakaza nervously <clears throat> standing next to Edos, and there's a mobster standing there with the fully automatic grenade launcher and his bodyguards who are armed with shivs. Uh, weapons they've taken from the hunters and weapons that they found on your dead soldiers. Could could you mute when you type, Brian? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. I forgot about that. <clears throat> Listen, I had a hell of a day, and it ain't even over yet. So let's just try to get this over with. What do you want? Was, that's right. Your day ain't even over yet. I want to make sure that I get on one of those transports. And he steps towards you and he goes, chuk, chuk, and the empty shell from the M40 that you fired flies towards Krakaza. And then he levels the rifle right at Edos's head. Right when he does this, Krakaza, all of his men train their weapons on you. The ones with the shivs are a little hesitant, though. They're like... Uh, yeah, but but Edos, you can see through the light reflecting off the ground and into the barrel a hint of the blue chrome explosive cap on this weapon. And he takes the safety off. He's like, and you see a little green light go, and it's fully charged. Urkaz at this point looks at all of them and says, "We can talk this out, but just know if you try and try anything." at least five of you are going down. He looks over at I don't you. care which five. He looks over at you. First off, there's no talking this out. You guys are going to do it no matter what. And he flips the gun around very smoothly in his hand and holds the handle and the trigger towards Edos to where he's holding the barrel pointed at himself. Oh. Now you are getting me on those transports. Is that understood? You know, you didn't have to make the whole show of it, but yeah, we can do that. Really what I wanted to do was shoot your balls off. Don't you think I've forgotten your connection to my sister? And he, I'm gonna spend a dark side point. There we go. <laughs> And my dark side point is stating that you have slept with this gangster's sister, and that's how you arrested him. You were fishing for information. It wasn't actually a relationship. She thought she was in love. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yes. <clears throat> I'll uh, kind of look down as I'm grabbing the 40 mil and handing it over to Kakaza. Listen, I didn't want to hurt her, and I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you have plenty of time to make it up to her, and he holds his hand down to lift you up. And I will take his hand. And he pulls you up, and they're not allowed to have technology here, so somehow uh, he pulls out a little paper bag and starts sifting through what looks like photographs that have been smuggled in, and he hands one to you and says, His name's Bobby, 
and then leaves. Starts heading towards the front line. I will look at the picture. Uh, you see a child about seven, eight years old. Dark hair. I'll, as I'm holding the picture, I'll slowly look over at Grikaza. Roll a perception. Gonna... Difficulty yeah. three. One, two, three. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. Perception, perception, where are you? I there mean, you've go. got lots of light side if you wanted to use it. <laughs> and you also have Thanks, a blue guy. Is this really something you want to use the light side on? <laughs> yes. Ignorance okay. might be bliss in this situation. No, I think, uh... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> nah, not mine. And remember, you get a boost die. Yep. Yeah. And I am downgrading. Kid. Downgrading your side. There we go. Succeed. So the strain is the stress from when you were flipping it over. And as you're looking at this kid, you realize that his facial features match that of your sisters not of yourself this isn't your kid they have your sister's kid and as you can see he's standing there with the woman that you slept with but behind them is a bunch of armed men I'm slowly going to draw my blaster yeah he doesn't even notice unless I'd like to roll a Skullduggery and ensure that that's actually the case. Yeah, let's do that. Now, his perception ain't ain't shit, right? But yeah, his no, guard's I... perception is pretty good. So I need you to roll against two purple and one red. Purple, one red. Skullduggery, yep. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> nope. That is a wash. So one blue, one black. Skull decory. It was there was a red in there though. <laughs> oh no, I did I did a downgrade on it. That's what I oh, did. Okay. JK. You're, you're you have your fine. blaster out, and no one notices. Not even Grikaza. How far is the guy from me? Twenty feet. I was going to say, Grikaza could stop you, but you did so good that not even he notices. And that's the threat. I don't shoot. So you're just I, as, I pull, as I pull my blaster, I stop and I realize I don't know where this kid is. Yeah. I have no idea any of this stuff. So if I kill him and kill these guys, I'm not going to know anything. So I stop myself from from doing anything and just kind of put the picture, take my hat and put it there and put my hat back on. Are there any other pictures in the brim? Yep. There's right, a so picture. Yeah, there's like a little photo album. Yeah, just like two or three pictures. Perfect. Perfect. Krakaza, he stands up and he's got his blaster out. I but he's not pointing it. Launch. I kind of like, I have the grenade launcher up a little bit, and I just ask what he wants to do now. Yeah, that's a fair point. Why did you pull the blaster out, Edos? Like, you've got the grenade launcher in your hand, and you're like... 
Well, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to, because I was handing the grenade launcher to him. Oh. So, uh, yeah. So you gave it back. I'm not aiming at anybody. I'm just hefting it up to kind of lift it up. Yeah. So I think I'm you already had to... one, Gurkaza. You beanbagged the Sith Inquisitor with one. <laughs> no, that was the same one because we only. Oh, you're right, one. right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And one of you had to carry the ammo. Which is me again. I'll grab the ammo case and go, listen, we kill these hunters, we kill who's ever in charge, if they're still alive, you kill his buddies, and you leave him to me. And I start, I, and I point over at the, the gang member. I just nod and I say, sounds good. And that's when you guys hear and this Corvette is coming down on your position and some of the survivors start to filter out. Um, one in particular, Gurkaza notices right of the way coming out of the tents nearby. It's a Mon Calamari in dirty rags. And the moment you see him, you suddenly get the urge for a stem pack. I thought that was cured. It is. But it's a lingering urge. It's kind of like when alcoholics stop drinking and then somebody's drinking a whiskey and they're just like... Mm, num, num. I, I shout out, Doctor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess a Wookiee doesn't need to roar for, wait for that. <laughs> it's just this loud <laughs> scream. He's like, ducks a little bit and he sees you and then he starts booking it over to you. It's like... Dun, 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 dun. And as he runs towards you, he comes to a sliding stop and says, I need you to help me with Valerie. What do you, wait, wait, what's going on with Valerie? She needs oh, help what? getting to the ship. Or Valeria. 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 I always get them mixed up. <laughs> uh, they're so alive. We've still got places to be, but I can, I can help her get on. There's no time. Everyone's leaving. I look at Edos, and I look back. We've got some unfinished business here, but I can get Valeria out of the ship and then you're leave being going. left behind. They're not gonna wait. I look back at Edos. How far are those guys away from us? Uh now they're actually coming towards you because they saw them on Calamari. Kurkaza. Yes. Now, and I'm going to blast at Fuckboy with a stun bolt. Okay. Remember, don't you have to get advantages for that? <laughs> Probably. Fuck it, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I think it's a stun him. setting. Yeah, you're like, eh. Okay, so, uh... If it's lethal, it's lethal. Uh, he's short distance, so one. Good. Oh, take a boost die, because he's not expecting this. Since you won on your adult Skullduggery, you can have a boost. Okay. <laughs> uh, I always, with that many advantages, I always give you a success. So, yeah, tell me how you kill him. Uh, because the rage of seeing that child, my nephew, I fired... <laughs> He just forgets about the stun setting, and he just kind of fires, and as the guy looks at him, the round goes right through his left eye, <laughs> just blowing his brains out. And it kind of sprays on the guard next to him who doesn't know what to expect. Grikaza, go. I just kind of let out a roar before I make the attack. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give you it's a range heavy, for right? your surprise. Hmm? Range heavy? Yeah. Since we don't One have like a, a, a thing for <laughs> automatic grenade launcher, <laughs> yeah, essentially that's what I'm saying. Ching 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 ching. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. <laughs> is he dead? So as as Edos whips up his blaster <laughs> and fires, and the mob boss gets hit in the head and falls backwards, they kind of catch him. Grakaza's eyes immediately go over to a small propane tank that's behind the group of them and just goes 
and the empty shell flies out and he goes Boomf. and the camera follows it as it spirals and one of the guys is like <laughs> tell me how you murder everyone what does what does what does Grikaza look like when they all light up on fire Grikaza just lets out like a roar of victory and holds the, the grenade launcher above his head just moving and shaking it up and down <laughs> and then he just as he lowers it he just starts kind of laughing <laughs> oh boy that was amazing <laughs> I fucking hate you guys so Eidos what's your reaction when you see Grikaza do this because I imagine you're sitting there boomf, and, and it just goes boomf, and rushes past, past your hair your face maybe your beard's like even pushed to the side a little bit yeah well as I hear him scream I'm like eh <laughs> as, he just, as he just starts laughing, I'm like, go and help the doc. I gotta go check these bodies real quick. And I'm going to go over and start searching their bodies to find... You know, dear, next time you get me coffee, anything. could you be a little like Pizza Hut? After 30 minutes, it's free? That'd be great. Could you Thanks. Go suck a dick? <laughs> There's in-laws watching. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Say what yeah, you want, no. boys. I got my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't put enough creamer in it. Damn it. Deal with it. Get out of here. Leave me with the kitties. All right, so the kittens. Kittens, not kitties like I've, I have children in my room. I mean, like, kittens. <sighs> Lord, I apologize. All right, so Edos, what is your response? Oh, after he blew it up? Blew yeah. him up. I'm just like, good, fuck these assholes. But as the smoke starts clearing, I look to your cousin and I say to him, go and help the doc. I gotta go check on these bodies. I gotta try to find something. All right. And I'm gonna go over there and do that. The co the doc is fine. He's standing there looking at the bodies bewildered and he's like, well, uh, shall we go then? Yeah, let's go. And I just cock the, the, the weapon back and just have yeah, goes, around the clap. And the brass flies out. And, like, you guys are walking away from the freaking explosion. Like, y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here. And then the camera pans. And Toon Po and Valerie are on the bridge. And one of the commandos, uh, who's kind of running the consoles but also keeping guard, steps over towards you guys. Um, if you don't mind, I have some things to take care of. Because oh, right I wanted ahead. me to check on a few systems. If you need me, I'll be in the engine room. All right. That's fine. All right. He turns around and leaves. Was there anything odd about that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Gurkaza didn't talk yes. to any of these commandos. He talked to the people in the hangar. These commandos were under the command of... Um, Jebediah. Hmm. Is there anybody else on the bridge? Yeah, other commandos. Like, maybe two, three other people? You can also radio Same. for Jebediah, who stayed on the ship. They're all kind of of the same group? No. I Well, yes, but no. Jebediah picked specialists, because... Nobody's really of the same group right now. They're like the remnants of squadrons that have all died. Like, they have different patches. But, yeah, he's kind of taken them under their wings. Uh, Tumpo is going to glance over at Valerie and say, I'm going to make sure he doesn't need a hand. And maybe Good idea. Like, grab even another one of the commandos that's on a, you know... A, a console that's not too important to... Yeah, you see a guy monitoring but... monitoring comms, which is something that <clears throat> Valerie could do with her experience and her expertise. And he's just writing down comm chatter. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, hey, I think he's gonna need a hand. Let's, let's go give him a hand. And 
follow said commando. I need you roll me a stealth or a skullduggery to follow him. Skullduggery will be helpful because maybe you you go, ooh, I know alternative routes, and you're, you're kind of like looking over, but you're going down a different hallway. But stealth, you'd be right. following his exact path without being noticed or seen. And I'm going to have you take a setback because you have a commando with you. Right. Difficulty is one purple, one red. And then so one, one purple, one red, one black. Yep. One of each. <clears throat> That's if but you want to use a stealth. My piloting gets rid of that black one, huh? <laughs> uh, no. Let me check the rules. Hang on. <laughs> Turns out it doesn't. <laughs> Oh, let me make sure I didn't. <laughs> no more setback removal for this group. <laughs> He's the only like, one I, I can't I seem the... to do that. The only one I can't seem to do that to is Joshua and Dust to Dust. Actually, yeah, I have an ability uh, to take <laughs> setback off of breathing under <laughs> space. It's called uh, Get Fucked GM. <laughs> Okay, reroll oh. that and add a blue on one side and a black on the another for the order of escalation rules that we have. And for those of you who are watching and don't know what that is, it's basically when we get a wash and that's boring, we add a boost and a black die to kind of give it more odds to show results. All right. Ooh. Yeah, you're... You follow along, and you see him go down towards engineering, and you step ahead with the commando and then go down a ladder so that you're actually further ahead. And after about 15 minutes, you guys are now in the neck of the Destiny Horizon. And you see him move over to a console on the wall, and he removes a plate, which shows a bunch of circuitry and an interface, takes a headset off and puts it on. Listens for a moment, and he starts typing a bunch of things on the console. Hmm. We're, like, below him. You're deep, you're further down the hallway. You are on the same level as him. If you wanted, oh. the commando could shoot right now. Seems a little hasty. Can I listen to see... I mean, that's... Oh, yeah, use a roll typing. perception. You can roll perception if you want. I'd like to do difficulty that. Difficulty three. Three? Actually, difficulty two and a setback because of the, uh, all of the tubes and the, the fuel running through this area. There's, there's a hum in this little chamber. Ooh. Okay, you succeed. Yes. Transmitting coordinates now. It appears that they're trying to rescue some comrades who are on the planet below. Um, they're still not on to me, haven't been from the beginning. Um, I'm going to send you coordinates on where I think they're going to head. I overheard them talking about the Sith Gate, so you may want to reinforce that area. Sounds like we're headed back to Beacon. I'll let you know the moment we depart. And then I'm gonna uh, shoot him. Hits a button. Okay. <laughs> Alright, Tsung Po, do it. They don't oh, bitch. What's my right. is he short or medium? He's um he's going to be uh medium cuz or short range cuz you're within ear distance. Uh but I want you to have a setback because there's fuel. Can you hear me? Oh boy. Yeah. Oh, I was just yeah. saying I have big ears. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair point. Medium. I'll give no. I'll give that to you. Let's let's make it medium range and make it harder for you. So two purple so two and one setback. Black. Yeah, you're getting cocky. If you get this, I'm, if you get a triumph, this episode ends in part one. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Oh, Let your head it. float. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's done. It's done. All right, we're gonna wrap this session up. Call it quits. Yes. <laughs>
Um, I say what I would like to do. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. I, I would like to, since that's too fun to pass up, is <laughs> shoot the tip of the microphone right off of the, the stem uh-huh. right in front of me. <laughs> so not, not kill him. <laughs> like, first shot. <laughs> and then and then when he like turns then poink <laughs> with a second <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> okay so <laughs> this, he's like I'll report my coordinates as soon as we <laughs> and like the microphone gets taken off and there's smoke coming off the tip of the headset and it's actually got like red hot glowing marks he looks down at it for a moment perspiration starting to form on his forehead he turns to the left to see you and thwack right in his head the laser didn't have time to heat all the way through, so there's this bulge on the back of his head where a splatter came out and hits the walls. And his body spins and he falls to the ground. The headset uh, is now dangling. And then I, like, hold <laughs> hold, hold my my blaster up and I look at the other command and I'm like, alright, now that seemed kind of hasty, but... I don't know if you could hear what he was saying. <laughs> come, come here. Wow. Come here. And then run down to the console. Uh, yeah, he follows you. Like, whatever doubt Show he him. had when he was like, I'll go with the nerd, he's not looking at you that way anymore. You skullduggered your way. You're like, shh, be quiet. Drop down. You are spec ops. And he heard about your exploits in the Imperial facility. So... <laughs> He's thinking that maybe, maybe you're, there's more to you than he knows. Um, what can I gather from what he's typed? Sure, roll Is computers. Doing that? Just generally. Yeah, Versus computers. Purple. Science well, or if, computers or communications or. I mean, what's my difficulty then? Oh, uh, average two. You, he basically sent. It, he didn't even have time to close the transmission. You blues. Technically, they're still on the line. Oh great! Or well, the recording is. They're not. He's not doing a live broadcast, but the recording is still going on. You could send it and trace the transmission, or just delete it and not send it at all. Oh. Can I... So it's still connected, just not audio. Could I... Well, I mean, all he was doing was recording a message to send. So there's no one on the other line listening right now. They have, to, they have not received the message yet. Okay. Can I, like, type in, um, like, transmission interrupted coordinates are as follows, <clears throat> and then put in the coordinates of, like, some other place that I know? Well, since you don't know when the last time he was that he reported to them, um, you're going to have to make some sort of skullduggery or, you know, some sort of lying check. You know, Skullduggery would make sense because you're like, if I were to say another location, where would I make it? (laughs) What would happen if I... I'm sorry, I'm still thinking through the coordinates of the sun that supernova Oh, after we used the... Uh, you you could do that. Yeah. Um, I need you to roll an astrogation. This hat is making me sweat. I'm taking it off. I'll have to have you roll an astrogation for that difficulty, though, since it's no longer on the map and things would have changed. I would have to say two in a setback, because you have been there before. <coughs> you were the pilot. You kind of remember. Right. 
anybody mind if I light side? Go for it, man. Need a light? <laughs> oh. Okay. Ooh -wee. Break my streak of successes here. <laughs> nope. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> you piece of garbage. Yeah, you succeed. You plot the exact course. You remember it exactly. <laughs> um. And then you can just hang up the call. I he think already said what gonna, he needed to say. Yeah, he's he's said. It sounds like he's has said enough that I don't need even have to like lie a new message. I can just lie that. He got cut well, off and had to finish it's the message the, manually. Right, but the reason why I'm making you roll a liar or a skullduggery is because you have no idea. He could have reported yesterday, right? And if all of a sudden you're reporting this other system, they're going to go, how? That's right. Okay. What's my skullduggery difficulty? Um, this would be, um, I think this would be a three. This would be whether or not all of a sudden the change in location is going to draw suspicion. Not that they're going to come out and kick your ass, but it, imagine one of those Imperial comms officers being like, Sir, we've intercepted a transmission, but information doesn't match up. That's all it's going to do. Right. Three purples. Woo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm just along for the ride, I guess. <laughs> and with that, we are going to end part one. We'll be back for part two in ten minutes. Bye-bye.